every journey begins with a first step. And every epic journey begins with an epic first step. Are you ready for that epic first step? Are you ready to begin an epic journey through 30 passages of Scripture in 30 days? I hope you're ready. Let's begin our epic journey. Welcome, everyone. It is Monday, June the 13th, 2022. It is currently 8.53 p.m. Central Time. Welcome to the Theology Central Podcast, where I'm broadcasting to you live from Abilene, Texas, and what I hope is going to be an epic first step. Now, it may be an epic failure. I'm very much prepared that this epic journey is going to be an epic failure, maybe from the very first step. I may stumble and fall right from the beginning, but I I am committed to this We'll see. It's going to have its ups and downs. It's going to have its twists and turns. I, I, I'm trying to do something that I, I don't even know if I'm capable of doing because it definitely goes outside of my comfort zone. It, it's it's forcing me to try to do something that I typically and um that I'm typically unable to do, but I'm going to do my very best. But most importantly, what I hope is that this proves to be a valuable journey for you. Very informative, educational, and challenging, and hopefully we all benefit from it. So let's set this up. It all started when Charles Stanley wrote a book called 30 Life Principles. That 30 Life Principles book turned into a 30 Life Principles DVD series. It turned into the Life Principles Bible, the 30 Life Principles Study Guide. It, it's, it, it's, it's turned into so many different things that have been sold and different merchandise dealing with the 30 Life Principles. The very first time I saw the 30 Life Principles, I was I was drawn to them. I'm like, oh, this is cool. 30 Life Principles. Let me write down these 30 Life Principles, and I'll try to make these my Life Principles as well, and I'll try to learn from them and, and grow from them, and it'll be great. So I, I grabbed a notebook, and I wrote down the 30 Life Principles, and I'm like, okay, what are the scriptures that these these 30 Life Principles are based off of? So I got the study guide. I got the book. And I started studying and studying going, I'm not seeing this. I see the life principle, but I'm not seeing the scriptural support proving what they're supposed to prove. So we've talked about it. We did kind of a mini series on the 30 life principles. And I just, I, I constantly struggle. So you know what? I said, look, I've got, I've got to be able to do something with these life principles, right? The series I was doing on the 30 life principles really wasn't going very well, but I'm like, I can't, I can't waste this. They're, they're, this is material. I've got to do something with it. Something that will benefit all of the time I've dedicated to trying to figure out the 30 life principles. And it's got. I've got to do something with the material that will benefit everyone else. So this is what I'm committing myself to do. 
We are going to turn on the microphone, hopefully for 30 days in a row. I'm, that's the goal is to try to do it 30 days in a row. I don't know if I'll be able to pull it off, but I'm going to do my very best because you all, uh, obviously know we have a lot of other series going on. But what, here's what I'm going to try to do. I'm going to turn on the microphone and say, here is life principle number one is given by Charles Stanley. Here is the scripture he gives. So what we're going to do is simply turn to the scripture. Now, it's going to be more than one scripture, but I'm grouping all of the scriptures that he's going to utilize in the study guide basically as one passage. And I'm not going to expand it. I'm not going to look at context. I'm I'm just going to look at what he gives. Nothing more, right? And I see, I know what you're saying, but you need to look at the context. I understand that. But for this exercise, right? For this experiment, for this epic journey, I'm simply going to open up the study guide and simply look at the scripture he gives. I'm going to try to only look at that scripture and at the end, try to say, okay, does it, does it prove the life principle as given by Charles Stanley or does it lead to a different life principle? Or if we're actually honest with the text, maybe we shouldn't even derive a life principle from it. It's going to be kind of a hermeneutical challenge, a Bible interpretation challenge. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be, well, challenging you to participate in it as well. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love to hear what you think about the passages that are provided. Now, I am not doing any study in advance, right? So that means that this is really like I, I, I'm standing on the high wire with no safety net. Because literally, I'm turning on the microphone, boom, the epic music. I bought that epic music. Did, did you like it? Did you like it? I hope you like that epic music because I paid money for it, right? So that we would have the license for it, not a copyright violation. So I paid for it. So there's our epic music intro, all right? I don't know if we'll use it every time, but we'll use it sometime. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to open up the 30 Life Principle Study Guide and just simply ignore everything he says. I'll give you the principle and then simply go to the scripture and then on the spot, in real time, go, what do we do with this? Now, sometimes people will be listening live and they can go, but what about this? And I'll be like, oh, that's really good. Sometimes they won't say anything till after, but it's going to be too late. We're going to, I'm giving this one shot. And then the next time, another principle, another passage of scripture. So the key is the 30 scriptures. When I say 30 scriptures, 30 passages in other words, I'm going to take everything used in the study guide and just group it together as one, and we'll emphasize which one that they think is most important, and then, we're, and then, when, and then we'll work through it, we'll work through it, and then when I realize I'm running out of time, because I'm going to try to give myself a limited amount of time to do this, when I get close to the end, I'm going to be like, okay, time, time up, you know, time's up, put the pencils down and papers down, just, and then I just, I'm just going to say, this is what I think, and then you can be like, ah wrong. Are you going to be like, oh, wow, I didn't think of that. And we'll just, see. It, it, hopefully it's going to be fun. It's kind of a personal challenge just to stop me because what I could ultimately do is take one of these passages of scripture and turn it into, for each passage of scripture, pr probably a six-week series without even trying. So this is forcing me to just go with what they give and not expand and just see what, what do I, if I just look at the scriptures they give, what do I end up with? So are you ready? We've already spent eight minutes, so we've got to get to it. But this, this is the first one. So, all right, here we go. Are you ready? I'm going to open up the Kindle app. I'm going to the 30 life principles, and I turn to life principle number one. And life principle, as written by Charles Stanley, is this. Our intimacy with God, his highest priority for our lives determines the impact of our lives. Our intimacy with God, his highest priority for our lives. So our intimacy with God is God's highest priority for our lives, and it determines the impact of our lives. So life principle number one is about intimacy with God, and supposedly that's his highest priority for our life, and it determines the impact of our life. So if you want to have impact, you must have intimacy with God, because that is God's highest priority. All right? Now, Right underneath that, the scripture that they provide is this, the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, 
let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock of the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. Genesis 126, then God said, let us make man in our image. Now remember, they went with intimacy with God is the priority. But we get Genesis 126. Let me read it from a different translation. Genesis 126. Genesis 126. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Now, the study guide is going to provide lots of other scriptures. They're going to provide lots of other scriptures here. But I think what we may do, because I could look at a lot of these, but I I think what we're going to do is I think we may just stick with that one scripture. In fact, now that I'm thinking about this, remember in real time, what I think I'm going to do is I think I'm actually... I I think what I may actually do is ignore all of the other scriptures given in the study guide. I may ignore all the others because I don't, because they give us one scripture and that really is supposed to be the scripture that the principle is derived from. Because if you look at the study guide and all of the other scriptures provided, it really doesn't offer much help and it really doesn't do anything else to prove the point. In fact, you would think if they had another scripture that would prove the point better, that would be the key verse that they would provide right under the principle. I mean, if you look at this, they they spend they 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 jump all over the place. They go to Romans 12, they go to Ephesians 1, they 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 look at Genesis 1 through 25, they do a little skipping around in Genesis, then they go to James. Uh they they uh they see where else do they go? Uh, then they go to Genesis 3, um, and but it doesn't really, none of those verses really help anymore with, with this principle. So the principle is our intimacy with God, his highest priority for our lives, determines the impact of our lives. All right, that's the principle. Let's set it aside. Let's look at the principle. Let's look at the scripture that they say this principle derived from. But let's forget the principle right now. Let's just look at the scripture, all right? Let's look at this one scripture. And this epic first step to go through 30 passages of scripture in 30 days. And here, I I could grab all of those passages of scripture, but I just feel like it will take us further and further away from the one passage they place right here. This is the one they place right here. And I want you to put your thinking caps on, okay? So Genesis 1, 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock of the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. That's all they provide. Now, if you were to take that verse alone, what would you derive a principle from it? Would you derive a set of principles from Genesis 1, 26? I know what you're saying, but we need more. Well, to be fair, the other scriptures they provide, they don't really do more to prove their, the principle that they've provided. So let's just go with Genesis 1, 26. And just on that scripture alone, what would you, what would you do with it? So, so I'm going to read it one more time. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. What do you think? I, this is where I almost wish there were people present, right? Because if there was people present, I'm like, come on. I would say, take a piece of paper. Give me what principle, principle or principles that th- you think you find in this verse. From this verse alone, all right? From this verse alone, what would you take? Well, let's just take it apart. Let's just take it apart. God said, let us make man in our image. Stop right here. We are created in the image of God. We are created in the image of God. That is a fact. 
all human beings are created in the image of God. We That is just a dogmatic fact and assertion. And I think it's an important principle that we must perceive ourselves. This would be the principle I would derive from this. I wouldn't derive, our intimacy with God is his highest priority. What I would derive from this is that we must see ourselves and others as people created in the image of God. Now, this verse obviously doesn't uh, give us the concept of sin and depravity and how that mars the image of God and how it corrupts it to some level, but it, that, and in a sense that that image is marred, I should say, and that we are corrupt because of a depraved nature. And, okay, but the, but we're still created in the image of God. We're still created in the image of God. So I think it's very important to constantly realize I am created in the image of God and every person I meet, every person I come in contact with, whether I personally like them or don't like them, whether they're mean, evil, cruel, whatever the case may be, they're created in the image of God. I must learn to see myself that way and see others that way because that that obviously implies some kind of inherent value, right? Some kind of inherent sanctity to that life, some kind of worth to that life because they're created in the image of God. So the, the I guess the first principle is I must see myself and I must see others as created in the image of God. That's what I must see. Instead of seeing their actions, instead of seeing their personality, instead of seeing their their race, their creed, before I see anything else, I'm like, that human being is created in the image of God. There's a sanctity to, the, to that life. There's a there's a worth to that life because they, in some way, shape, or form, even though marred, even though marred by sin, I know this verse doesn't mention depravity or sin, but even when all of that's there, the image is still there. The image is still there in some way, shape, or form. I think that's the most important, I think that's the, the most important principle that we derive from it is that we are made in the image of God. And I must see other people that way. And are you quick to forget? I'm quick to forget. When you see someone, do you immediately go, that person's creating the image of God? Or do you immediately go, man, I don't like them. Or or look at that. Or I don't like the way they talk to me. Or you just, you judge them based. In other words, you see so many other things before you see the image of God. And when you get upset, you, you forget the image of God. I think that, to me, that is the principle that is derived from Genesis 1, 26. Not or that intimacy with God is his highest priority, but I think that we are created in the image of God. That's just a fact. And I've got to see that in me. I've got to see it in others because I can forget it in me as well. There, there's, there's an inherent value. I know in our society, worth and value is determined by looks. It's determined by position, power, money, and success, it's, it's, it's value and worth is determined by so many other things, right? The, the kid who, who is the best athlete is considered more worthy or more valuable, maybe in a school, the girl who's the, the prettiest, maybe considered the one with more worth or value, but everyone is creating the image of God and has worth and value. Society assigns worth and value based off externals. My worth, the worth and value that we, that all human beings have has nothing to do with the externals. It's that I'm created in the image of God. And that image, of course, it, there's a lot that goes there. There's a moral aspect to that image. There's, there's thought, there's emotion, there's spirituality. There, there's a lot there that, that talks about being the image of God. But I think that's very important. I think that's a that's a very important life principle. Well, I think that's an epic life principle to begin our journey through these 30 passages of scripture with Genesis 1, 26 as like a key life principle. See you, see yourself, and see everyone around you as created in the image of God. See them as that before you see anything else. Is that important? I think that's an important life principle. Number two, right? Let's look at the next life principle from this. I think there's the first one. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Number one, this is important. We have to see ourselves and see others as creating the image of God. And number two, we have to see ourselves as that which was created 
not that which creates. We are the creature. We are the thing created. We are not the creators. I always have to realize that in life, there is, a, there is in a sense, there's an order. There is the creator and there is the created. I am in the created category. I am created by God. I have to see my correct position in creation. I am the creature. I am not the creator. So first I have to see that I'm created in the image of God. I have to see others that way. But then I have to remind myself that we, that I am the creature, not the creator. I'm the creature, not the creator. Now, I, I, I can say that, but I b- pretend to sometimes think that somehow I make the rules. I determine right and wrong. I determine what should and shouldn't be done. But I always have to, who am I? Who am I? I'm simply the, the creature. God is the creator. I, if I, if I, the minute I forget that, it's very easy to almost in, in, invert the concept that God is there to serve me, almost as if I created God, but God created me, therefore I should serve him. We need that proper understanding. I think it's an important life pr- principle to never forget that I was created in the image of God, but to never forget that I was created, that I am the creature, not the creator. I think those are two very important life principles. I think those are very two very important life principles. Number one, see the image of God in me and others. And number two, never forget that I am the creature, not the creator. And I think number three, this is very important. Because I was created by God, it's only in God can I find meaning, purpose, and reason. Meaning, purpose, and reason can only be found in the one who who is the creator. You've got to, in a sense, whenever you have anything, you've got to look to the owner's manual to understand, right? To understand it, understand what you need to do to troubleshoot it, whatever the case may be. Well, in this particular case, if I want purpose, if I want meaning, if I want reason, if I want anything, if I want morality, if I want to understand anything, it's only found in the creator. So I I think there's three life principles Three life principles that we're going to take from Genesis 126 that does not appear in the life principles book, which is just bizarre, all right? So number one, life principle number one, we must never, we must see ourselves, see, we must, I'm going to put, we must see ourselves and others as created in the image of God. The image of God. All right? We must see ourselves as, as, and we must see ourselves and others as created in the image of God. We must do that. We, we forget it so quickly. We forget, we just, we see an enemy that we want to destroy. We see someone we want to debate and win. We, we see, we, we forget these, these are human beings creating the image of God. That, that there's some, there's something sacred about that. There's, there's something that we, we, ah, it's, so only, we almost view people, I hate to say it, some people treat other people or see other people almost like a bug that's disposable and a waste of their time. Okay, number two. We must, we must, we must understand the, we, let's see, we must always see ourselves as the created, not the creator. We must see ourselves as the created, not the creator. Not the creator. Yes, I'm writing it down because remember, I'm doing this in real time based off looking at the passage of scripture. So number one, we must see ourselves and others as created in the image of God. We must see that. We have to get back to that. It seems to be so forgotten. We we treat people with such disrespect and disdain and hatred. And there's such division racially, politically. It, it's just... 
oh, it's so, we we view people by their political party, their political affiliation, we, by their gender, by their sexuality. We see people by so many things like, no, first and foremost, they are created in the image of God. That, that's how we must see that. Number two, we must see ourselves as the created, not the creator. We're not the creator. We're the created. We forget that order. Okay, therefore, if, if I'm the created, well, well, that leads to number three. Okay, we, we, if I can spell we correctly, we must look to God for purpose, meaning, reason, morality. We're not going to find it anywhere else. If we look for, if we look to anything else, well, why would we look to the creature? Why would we look to the material world to find purpose, to find meaning, to find reason, to find morality? The, the material world is not the creator. God is the creator. So we must look to him. Genesis 1 26 makes this all in a sense, gives us these principles. Let me read it to you again. Genesis 1 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. We are made in the image of God and, and we are made by God. So what do I deri deri derive from this? I must never forget that I'm creating the image of God and others creating the image of God. Number two, I must always see myself as the creature, not the creator. I must see my, myself as the created, not the creator. I know we would never say, I am the creator, I am God, but we sure act like it. We sure act like we get to make the rules. We get to determine wrong and right. We get to determine who's saved and not saved. We get to determine. We, we really act like many gods a lot of the time, even though we may know as Christians the right words to say, we act like many gods. And number three, we must look to God for purpose, reason, meaning, and morality. You can't look to the material, you can't look to the material world for purpose, meaning, reason, any of that. You, you can't, you can't even, I think you, you can't look to the material world even to find love, right? Technically you can't, love is something that transcends the material. So we have to look to God for everything, love, per, meaning, everything has to be found in God. If God is the creator, we must look to him. The minute we take our eyes off him, we lose purpose. We lose meaning. We lose even the reason to live. We lose reason. We lose morality. We lose everything. Once you turn your back on the creator, well, then you emphasize the created. In other words, you exalt self. You begin to look to the creation for purpose, meaning, and reason, and everything becomes messed up and corrupted, and everything disintegrates and falls apart. See Genesis, or Romans chapter 1. Those are the three, I think, three very important life principles that comes from Genesis 1, 26. Three. And, 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 and I remember originally my goal was to do this in 30 minutes. I don't, maybe I'm going to get close because I'm glad I made the impromptu decision not to look at all the scriptures. If we just started going through all the scriptures, we would just, we would leave Genesis 1, 26 behind. That is the primary verse put right here. The, the primary verse is Genesis 1, 26. It, remember, Charles Stanley gives us the principle. His principle is our intimacy with God, high, his highest priority for our lives determines the impact of our lives. And then it quotes Genesis, or it gives us Genesis 1, 26. That doesn't mention anything of intimacy with God. So I'm going to derive three life principles where Stanley supposedly derived one, but I believe ours comes from the text. Number one, we are created in the image of God. The text is explicitly states that. So I can never forget that. I'm created in the image of God. There's some inherent value and worth and sanctity to that fact. No matter what culture says, and I must see others that way. Remember, there's a lot of pressure. It's true when you're young. It's true when you're older, right? When you're young, you're like, okay, I, I mean, I, I don't, I, I'm not the strongest or I'm not the prettiest or whatever the case may. And you feel a lot of pressure and you feel unworthy and you feel unloved and you, and you feel depressed and you feel discouraged and you feel hurt. You feel betrayed and you feel that you never measure up. Well, that's why we need to so emphasize you are creating the image of God. There is value, worth, and sanctity because of that fact. But then when you get older, it doesn't go away. 
In fact, as you start getting older, you may then feel like, oh, now I'm getting older and my body's changing or I'm, I, I'm losing my hair or, or I, you know, wait or, or just whatever. You, you realize your looks are changing and you, and you lose that vitality of youth. You don't feel like you have the same strength or energy. And so you start feeling like you lose purpose or meaning. No, no, no. Your value is not determined by those externals. You're made in the image of God. There's your worth. There's your value. And we have a suicide epidemic currently in society because they have no self-worth. Because the society says you're supposed to find self-worth where? In yourself and your accomplishments? No, your self-worth. It's not self-worth. It's created worth. You are created in the image of God. Therefore, you are worthy because you're created in the image of the creator. So, so we've, that's, a, that's a life principle we need to write down. We must see ourselves and others uh, as created in the image of God. Number two, we must see ourselves as the created and not the creator. So much of our problems in society is everyone's running around like they're many gods, like they're the many creator. They create reality. They create truth. They create wrong and right. They create everything. And society is slowly but surely deteriorating and falling apart because the creature can't determine what the creator has already determined. Or we could say it this way. The created cannot redetermine and redefine and restructure what God has already defined and structured. We're we're fighting against God. We're fighting against the creator. We're the creature. We're the created. We must never forget that order. I'm the created. God is the creator. Therefore, I must humbly submit to the creator. I'm not above him. I'm not greater than him. And I need to stop pretending being him. Number three. We must look to God for purpose, for meaning, for reason, for morality. I've said it so many times. There, look, when I look at Christianity, there's, there's so many reasons why I would want to abandon it because of all the horrible things that we've talked about today. There's so much. But I would never abandon Christ. I mean, ab- this, the, the, the external thing called Christianity has got a million problems. But I can never abandon God and Christ because if I abandon God, where, where do I look for ever, anything? Purpose? What is purpose? Purpose is found in the material universe that just got here by an accident. I, I have to create a purpose, but it's a created purpose. And if it's just a created purpose and I'm the one who created it, is it really a purpose? Right? I, I have to try to find meaning. Where do I find meaning in a materialistic universe that says you're here by an accident and you're just going to die and go back to the dirt? Where is any, it would be a, a, a pretend meaning. Where do I truly find my reason for existing? Where do I find reason at all? If I, if, from a material universe, where do I find morality? Where do I truly find love in a material luna, universe? I must look to God for all of those things, for love, for morality, for meaning, for purpose, for reason. It can only be found in the creator you can't find these things in the material universe. These things are are beyond materialism. Materialism can't explain these things. You have to look to the one who created you. And I can never forget that because so many times I may look to, well, the material world for what I should be looking to God for. And you will always end up coming, you'll be lacking, you'll be wanting, and you'll find out meaningless, 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 meaningless. Those are the three principles. One more time, we must see ourselves and others as created in the image of God. Number two, we must see ourselves as the created, not the creator. And number three, we must look to God for purpose, for meaning, for reason, for morality, and for love. And I'm going to add love into that because love is this, well, we could get into a whole philosophical discussion there. That is what I think Genesis 126 points to. Based off the text, I don't know where he gets our intimacy with God, his highest priority for our lives determines the impact of our lives. I don't see that. If I go through the rest of the scriptures provided here, I I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it um, at all. I don't see it. I just don't. 
I'm looking at everything he has here. And it, it's, it's no, he, he just, he barely, he just makes a, uh, he just, he just really, what's even most bizarre in the book is he just gives you, he doesn't even have the text written out. It just says Genesis one twenty six. He doesn't even have the text written out. Then he goes through his descri- descriptions, but Genesis 126 is the reference right underneath the principle. Like this is the verse that gives us the principle, but it doesn't. It doesn't in any way, shape, or form. I think those three life principles. Now you may you may disagree with the ones I came up with, but remember, this is impromptu. The, the whole thing that makes this fun is I have to do it right on the spot. Makes it nerve-wracking but makes it a little bit fun, all right? Now, maybe if we expanded it to all of Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, Genesis 3 would just determine what happened in the fall. So so really, I think Genesis 126 is a good verse to go to. I think the rest of Genesis 1 and 2, we could just use to build and strengthen the principles that we gave. But those are three life principles. And tell me, do you think those three life principles are biblical life principles? Do you agree with them? And do you think that they would be beneficial and helpful for you to write down and remember? Genesis 126, we took three life principles, completely different than the life principle as provided in the 30 life principles book by Charles Stanley. Same scripture, different life principles, I believe the ones we came up with are derived from the text. What I feel is that he came up with the principle and tried to place it on the text. I think he tried to, he tried to place that on Genesis 126 instead of taking the principle from Genesis 126. And so many times we take our ideas and impose them on the Bible where our ideas should arise from the Bible. There you have it. Tomorrow, we'll move to life principle number two and scripture number two. I think we're just going to focus on the one scripture. I I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This could turn into a massive train wreck, but we're we're going, it's it's going to be an epic train wreck, an epic journey, an epic exercise that may have epic success and may have epic failures. I think what we just did tonight is pretty epic. And those are three absolute epic principles that could have an epic impact on your life. How many different ways can I use epic? I don't know. I mean, did you not hear the epic music at the beginning? Well, we're going to conclude by playing ourselves out to that epic music because, well, I paid for it. So since I paid for it, we're going to use it again. All right, you can email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. I would love to get your epic epic thoughts. I, that wasn't so epic when you mess up the word. I would love to get your epic thoughts on these epic principles as we conclude with some epic music.